Jimmy Chang here with Andrew and in today's video we are going to be unboxing, testing and giving you guys our thoughts on the most mysterious scooter available. We tried looking up information so that we could be knowledgeable and give you guys a good overview of what the scooter is all about but we just couldn't find anything about it. And Andrew, from your sleuthing, what have you learned about this scooter? Okai okay, Neon ES20. It's a 250 watt motor, single motor scooter with a max output of 500 watts. I think it's the cheapest scooter we've seen with the NFC card reader. So you can unlock it with a phone or unlock it with, I think maybe keys. Solid rear tire, air fill tire in the front, 36 bolt, 9.8 amp hour system. So it's just underneath 360 watt hours. So it's an affordable, sleek looking, tech filled electric scooter that's pretty mysterious because we haven't been able to find any other reviews on it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. So I, there is an NFC card reader, so we can use this instead of a phone. So I'm really impressed that none of these phone pieces were broken on the scooter, but it could also be that it's pretty light. From my understanding, this is like 36 pounds. So this is very similar to the Ninebot Max where you have to connect these, connect a couple connectors before assembling it. So these are nice connectors because they're directional. The one I don't like about the Ninebot Max is you have to match up the pin and it's easy to bend the pin. And we're in, nice. Wow, this is a lot longer than I thought it was gonna be. That's big. Yeah, I was thinking it was gonna be a lot smaller. So these are eight and a half inch tires. And um, like I said earlier, it's an eight and a half um, pneumatic tire in the front and eight and a half inch solid tire in the rear, which is most likely the tire to get a flat. And then this is also um, a front motor scooter. So this is gonna be better for you in rainy and slippery conditions because the motor's in the front versus the motor in the rear, which can be a little bit, can give you a slide out effect. What's neat about it is it does have some suspension in the rear. It's an IPX5 water resistance rating. Oh, that's pretty cool how it charges. Look at this yeah. thing. We're already starting to see the high tech in this scooter. And um, apparently when we get the app, I, I should be able to adjust this color. On the website, it said there was dual braking and it said there was electronic braking on the front, but it didn't tell us what the other braking was. Or just by um, being able to break it apart and look at it, we do find that there's a disc brake in the rear. I'm excited to ride this new scooter. Andrew, what are your thoughts? I'm excited. It's actually, it's exceeded my expectations. As it has my expectations. This scooter looks pretty sweet. I'm excited to get it on the road though, because it doesn't matter how great the tech is, doesn't matter how sleek it looks or how well it was packaged. If it doesn't ride well, it's gonna be a dud. So let's uh, wait for this guy to get charged and then we'll get out and ride. All right, we've got it all charged up. We've got it connected to our phone via the app and it's ready to go. So we're gonna go take it for a spin. a solid tire in the rear it doesn't feel like it it feels nice and flush and there is suspension in the rear it's pretty stiff the suspension in the rear is really stiff so it says the max speed on this is 15 miles per hour i'll see if i can get it going faster i did go in downhill i was able to go past 15 downhill but on flat land it's about right it stops right at 15 and i have this in sport mode as well we're gonna do a high speed brake test here <laughs> a 15 mile per hour high speed brake test and the test says it's less than 32 feet. It didn't really say exactly what the braking power is. It just said less than 32 feet. So let's see if it's true. That was pretty good. That was less than 32 feet for sure. I'd say this is one, two, three, four. It's about eight feet, 10 feet of stopping power. So from 15 to zero, that was pretty good. Got a nice little bell here. And these handlebar heights pretty well. Uh, I'm six feet tall, this is comfortable. It's not quite as tall as the Ninebot Max, so this might not be the best for tall riders, but if you're below six feet or under, this should be perfectly fine for you. Let's test this hill climbing ability. It's supposed to be rated for 20% hill grade, so we'll kind of go up this hill. I'd say this is about a, a 12 to 15% hill grade. I'm going 12 miles per hour up this hill. The steepest part of the hill, how's it going now? 10 miles per hour up the steepest part of the hill. Yeah, I'd say it'd probably climb up a 20, 20 degree hill, but probably crawl up it <laughs> is what I think. Yeah. But most single mo motor scooters are that way. If you live in a really hilly area, you definitely want to get a dual motor scooter. The scooter is rated for um, 220 pounds, 100 kilograms is what it says it's rated for. And I'm right at 90% of that, <laughs> 200 pounds right now. Baby, 
thing I like about this light show is it's classy lighting. It's not like ostentatious, like too much over the top disco party. That's gotta be the best display screen that I've seen on a budget scooter, hands down. Pretty cool. So we can switch to classic technology or minimalism. Cool. So these are pretty sweet looking. We're gonna go with classic. You can lock it from here. If it's in lock mode, it creates a really lot of resistance so you can't take off on right, right away on it. You can pick it up, but you can't right away on it. The app is very nice, very clean, has even ways for you to uh, go through and do a diagnostic systems check. The other cool thing is just these lights, this light show. I said it's classy, but if you wanted a disco party, we're gonna keep riding so we can get more thoughts on this. And then at our next stop, we're gonna talk about the things that we love, things that we hate, and who we think the scooter's for. Let's keep riding. So I, I will say this is a nice ride. It doesn't go fast, but for what it does, it's nice and smooth. It's not torquey at all, not nearly as torquey as say some of the thousand uh, dollar electric scooters that we recently reviewed if you haven't checked out that video make sure you watch that but comparing this to like the e2w this thing is a smooth machine of course it doesn't go as fast Woo. Woo. oh yeah so the stem is uh coming out now the locking mechanism so yeah you got to be careful when you jump this thing because this thing does come loose the nice thing is, is if this comes loose it doesn't unlatch right there it has to actually come all the way down right here to unlatch so this coming loose that's not gonna unlatch the scooter but you definitely want to make sure you check on this and for me i would really just use a velcro strap around this We're having a lot of fun with this Okai scooter and that's what we do. We love to bring you guys honest reviews that are fun. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you guys are, give it a thumbs up. We really appreciate you. So let's talk about the things that we love and we hate about the scooter. Andrew, what do you love about the scooter? I just love the clean look of the scooter. For $6.99, you really don't find a scooter looking this awesome. The display is great. The lights are really phenomenal. I've never seen a scooter at this price point being able to control the lights and have an app with it. The app, it's kind of so-so, so I love it when it works, but I hate it when it doesn't work. We've been able to get it to work on the iPhone, no problems. The Android, we've been having some difficulties with. One other great thing I love about this is I can bunny hop it real easily. I was catching massive air on the scooter, probably the highest I've gotten on a commuter scooter. And then I can power slide it. That's pretty good which most scooters, when they have one single brake and it controls both the front and the rear, you can't power slide it, but because this has a solid tire, I'm, I have the ability to power slide it, which I love to do and I love to have fun on a scooter. For me, I would say this scooter is the most fun we've had under $700 or under 15 miles an hour. I mean, yeah. would you say that? Yeah, probably. It's, this is a fun, good looking scooter but it's not perfect. There are things that we feel can be improved. We touched upon it with the app. The app has its issues, especially when trying to connect to an Android phone. So if you guys can figure out how to work out those kinks, I feel like that is something that's gonna be worked out over time. And it's just kind of growing pains with a brand new product like this. While it looks great, there are some of these, these weld marks here that are, they're, they're pretty rugged. It just doesn't fit the nice clean look of this scooter, these rugged weld marks. And then for me, this latch. I mean, it just pops out too easily. So those are my the main things that I don't like about the scooter. Anything else you can add to that, Andrew? There's no kick plate. So when I do jump on it, sometimes I do land on that rear fender. That's pretty much the same on all commuter scooters. Not a lot of them have a rear kick plate. I wish there's a little bit more power. It's going up hills. This scooter is not meant for off-roading or steep hills. It's uh, definitely gonna need an assist if you're gonna try doing anything like that. I'm 200 pounds right now, close to the top weight limit, which is 220 pounds. I was only crawling up the hill at a 15% grade going 10 miles per hour up it. And the battery levels, it states it can get 25 miles of range. I doubt I'd ever get that because I'm always gonna go 15 miles per hour. So this scooter 
wish there was just a slightly bigger battery on it. Finally, who do we think this electric scooter is for? To me, this is the poor man's Unagi. Great looking scooter, not super fast, pretty portable. This you can get at a lower price and get an amazing app that can control it. Beautiful lights, it's a beautiful looking scooter. And so for me, this is a perfect commuter for the person that wants something nice like an Unagi, but wants to save some money. What about you, Andrew? I think this is one of the sleekest last mile solution scooters. So the battery isn't that big, but if you're only going two to five miles, this is a great scooter. It only weighs 35 pounds, well, 35.2 pounds. It's really portable. It locks into place and easily to fold. So yeah, for me, if you have a last mile solution and you're looking in between like a nine bot max, which is pretty heavy, an Unagi, which is pretty light, but lacks height, lacks cool features on it. This is a great scooter for the last mile solution. We're gonna add anything that we discover in our full written review that you can find at gotscooter.com. Thanks for watching and remember when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.